Hi, welcome to a new Chess Pieces video. In fact, the very first video in English. Today we'll see a very special chess set, so this video is a special edition. And if you understand Spanish better than English, you can check the original version in Spanish. Well, what's this lonely knight doing here? As you already read the title, you know we'll see an authentic Jakes of London chess set. I refer to it as Jakes of London for short. Some pronounce it as Jack London. Long story short, here we have this famous book that talks about Jakes London and British Chess Company, a competitor in the late 1800s. As a matter of fact, before standard chess pieces, we had some different designs that differ from, from country to country, so it was a bit complicated between players used to different designs. Maybe a French player played against an English player with English pieces, with a little advantage for the English as he got used to those designs. And they could differ a lot. Also those pieces were thin and tall, so very unstable. Nathaniel Cook, a person from the press industry, in the mid 1800s designed and patented a pieces design that balanced the set. Those had white bases, simple figurines, a bit based on previous designs. They were, uh, were also suitable for mass production, at least in a greater volume than that previous designs, that were harder to make. This story also involves Howard Staunton, a great chess player from the time, autoproclaimed world champion that gave his name to promote these pieces by writing, signing and endorsing them. So in conclusion, we had Nathaniel Cook as the designer, Jakes London as the whole manufacturer and Howard Staunton as the celebrity endorsing these pieces, therefore called Staunton, Staunton Chessmen. Howard Staunton himself signed the labels of the first Staunton chess pieces boxes, later they had a facsimile signature. So well, these sets came to be known as Staunton Chessmen in various ads and publications. Part of the design that inspired Nathaniel Cook were these horses of the Parthenon. Throughout the years, uh, different horses match different designs, matching the form of those found in the pediment. Being the knight's shape key for identifying Staunton very specific models and date of manufacturing. Other pieces match already known designs. For example, the pawn is very similar to previous ones with the characteristic ball above. On the other side, pieces like the king and queen had a new look by Nathaniel Cook. Argentina got several Jake's London sets in the early 1900s. Due to the great Argentinian chess tradition, many clubs use them. This set is from 1925 to 1940. It's a bit hard to properly identify it. But with Alan's first book help, we can identify some shapes. For example, the knight from 1925 and 1939 matches our knight. Or we can use the bishop, as the meters were very wide in earlier models, and in the end, they had a thinner meter. That is what matches our bishop. We can also see the evolution of the boxes, first without separation in the middle, 
then we did some special boxes for special sets like the ivory ones that had a place for each piece was hard and expensive to find also signed with the sliding lead mostly used for cheaper and weighted Jake's London sets there are also some different preser preservation status in the labels and we also had some cartoon caskets that have special sets like ivory ones this one is our set box which is in restoration process there is no lining with felt in this mahogany, mahogany classic box in the restoration we have to add a separation in the middle again as if dated correctly it should have one we can also see the lock appearing in almost all boxes we can see them in the book talking about generalities among all pieces let's see for example a queen and a king we can see that the wood is darker than what we are used to there is a debate about the reason of this color if it's if it was passage of time or if this boxwood from England or Europe was originally this yellow. Comparing this with the set from India with the Staunton design, we can see that the so-called boxwood from India chess sets is very wide. Many hope that the passage of time and use will make them have this antique color, but well, that's not guaranteed. Here we have some damaged pieces, where in the damaged part we can see the tone of the wood. Jake's London pieces have authentic ebony from Africa, that is the most black wood one could get. Today it's very difficult or prohibited to procure this wood. I don't know if that tree species is extinct or not. Here, seeing some ebony pieces damages we can see that it's black inside so that's it so Jake's London in wood came in both wood and ebony and also in ivory natural and red painted Before seeing the pieces one by one, just another note. In some circles, talking about Staunton chessmen only refers to Staunton chessmen made by Jake Sloan. We know that many manufacturers started promoting their sets as Staunton chessmen, and Jake Sloan was aware of that, saying that those were copies of lesser quality. Let's see the pieces one by one, starting with the king. Here we can see the incredibly wide base, with lots of space to add weight. And this classic Staunton shape, with a big base wider than the rest of the piece. Then the piece stem with a curve that follows its shape throughout the whole piece. Then we have 
Then we find the main color and two extra colors and the king's crown classic shape. With the curves above. Of course, black pieces have the same shape. Let's see if the camera can get this important detail. In the king's basis, we can see the Jake's London stamp. We can see it in both kings. Let's try zooming in. There you are. In the beginning, only the white king had this stamp. Later in 1885, both kings started having the Jake's London stamp. Before continuing, I wanted to focus on the good grain. In contrast with other goods, with more or less detail. But this tonality make them, makes them stand out. We can also compare them with an Argentina Olympic king, made with white wood from South America. that can match this color and grain. And the note about the felt in these spaces, this is not an original felt from a Jake set, but a restoration by Ajedrez Hirsch. We tried to make a bigger restoration work, but we could get this. Where he replaced all felts that were before, previous felts were not original either. Here we can see an original felt from a Jax London piece. It was done with green base, made of almost pure wool. thin fabric that doesn't follow our tradition of thick felts in Argentina. Also being thinner than felts from chess pieces made in India. Let's set the color that differs from other felts. Now the queens. We can see the queen's height is really lower than the king's. This is a difference always present in original Staunton sets. Along the years, the queen's current had more points and this is a classic design following the king's shape in some aspect. White base that makes this piece very heavy and stable. We can see it comes back instantly to its position.
Then we see the color, two rings, the coronet and the little ball. Bishop's turn. Here are the fine ones. And also the wounded in battle. As ebony is a hard wood, any heat that it takes may make it crack, so it's very delicate. The bishop has its standard shape, not so open meter, white base and a curved stem. Three colors. What about the knight, the piece that I've been showing from the beginning of the video? This kind of knight is sometimes called the martial type, but it also could be a lessing model, most likely. Let's see the knight's details. Here we have its face, the eye, the pupil dot, Just reminding that older knight designs had no pupils, just the entire eyeball. And here we can see a, a particular mark in Jake's London sets, and maybe some reproductions of them, which is the king's side stamping, that is used in both knights and rooks, one per side. What's it use? Well, maybe the ones that know about chess history or used to play or read old books some time ago, the descriptive notation was used, in contrast to the algebraic, algebraic notation used today. In descriptive notation, coordinates weren't used, but something similar, naming columns with the initial piece at the first rank. For example, the initial movement in the classic opening, which is E4 in algebraic, would be pawns to king's four, what means pawn to the king's column to the fourth rank. Talking about the knight's moves, we had to keep track of each knight, to know how to annotate, as knights and rooks can move to the same squares, not as the bishops that are mutually exclusive. So the king's knight, the ones that is placed on the king's side, would be called king's knight throughout all the game, and Whenever someone saw the position, the crown of the knight would serve as a hint to know that that one is the king's knight, while the other one should be the queen's side knight. Here we can see this case. Where, to remove that ambiguity, about what knight moves to this square is solved by naming its original side. So, about the knight's design, we see a similar base to the rest. The horse body is screwed into it, as there are two different pieces, base and body. We have a detailed mane with all its hair, the horse body, very detailed according to standard models.
and many carvings in the face that give the knight an aggressive look. We also have the nostrils, eyes, ears. And of course, the king's side stamping. About rooks. Here we also have the king's side stamping. And what about this design? Well, throughout history, rooks have evolved a bit. Here we can see a deeper embrasures in these crenellations. Earlier models had shorter merlons or walls. The roof is well polished and walls are thick. We can count six crenellations and a similar Jake's base. Here in the book we can check different rooks with different crenellations. And about knights with different bodies throughout models. Some knights indeed had drop jaw. Now pawns, they almost never change. This had a great base, the color, and comparing it with other set pawns, we can see that these here are finer, so a bit more delicate and prone to cracks. That's this Jake's London aesthetics. Maybe current pawns colors are thick, thus much more resistant, but Jake's had a balance between good looks and functionality. Sadly, here we can see a broken color. Well, that's all about the pieces. Going into another detail, we can check that the weights were screwed in and not molten like today. Let's see if we have a picture of it. Here we can see two holes where the tool to screw the weight could work on. Let's set up the team for a picture before going to the measurements and weights section. A bishop, rook, black queen, A pawn. What do you think about this video and this Jake's London Chessman? I hope you liked it and it wasn't too long, but I thought it was a great moment to talk about this chess piece's history. 
In the description you will find some links to get reproductions and authentic checks. And I hope to make more videos in English. Today's puzzle was composed by Edith Baird in 1893, where white mates in two. Still there? I leave here links to other chess pieces videos and please subscribe if you want to get more content. Till next time!